And now we'd like to introduce you to Dr. Dmitry Kopolovich. Uh, Dr. Dmitry is the Research and Development Manager of King Engine Bearings. Dr. Dmitry, as he's often called, is regarded as one of the foremost authorities in engine bearing research and development. He earned his PhD in materials engineering and serves as research and development manager at King Engine Bearings. As a manager and team leader of King's Advanced Materials Research and Development Unit, Dr. Dimitri is known as the engine bearing doctor for his extensive investigations into the cause and prevention of premature engine bearing failure. His areas of expertise include development in new engine bearing materials, the advancement of technologies for the commercial production of engine bearing materials, theoretical calculation and simulation of engine bearing operation, and the analysis and prevention of engine bearing failure. During the webinar, we invite you to ask questions by typing your question into the chat box provided in, on the side of your screen and clicking on Submit. We will answer as many questions as possible at the end of the presentation. Please note that all questions are submitted anonymously, and you can submit a question at any time, and we encourage you to do so. You do not need to hold your questions until the end of the presentation. Now, we turn this webinar over, webinar over to Dr. Dimitri. Dr. Dimitri, you're on. Uh, thank you, Tom, for your nice introduction. Uh, good morning to everybody participating in this uh, webinar. I will start. Uh, the title of the today web seminar is Engine Bearing Materials and Failure Analysis. We will talk mostly about materials and their properties and much less about the bearing geometry, which was explained by Bill McKnight in his interesting presentation a month ago. Here are the subjects that we will discuss today. First of all, I, I will consider the environment where engine bearings operate. Then we will talk about the basic properties and requirements to bearing materials. Afterward, we will discuss different engine bearing materials, their structure, compositions, and their major applications. In the next section, comparative characterization of engine bearing materials will be considered. And in the last section, we will analyze the types of engine bearing failures and discuss the ways of preventing them. This slide presents the main conditions under which engine bearings operate. Most of the time engine bearings work in hydrodynamic regime, which means no metal-to-metal -metal contact between the bearing and the, and the journal surfaces. Direct metal-to-metal -metal contact occurs at low RPM speed and high loads. Uh, the load is cycling due to the alternating character of the cylinder pressure. The next, bearing operated at an elevated temperature. Uh, foreign or dirt particles present in the oil and affect the bearing operation. And at last, the crankshaft surface has a roughness. This slide explains what bearing materials properties are important for its stable operation. The first property is uh, load carrying capacity or fatigue strength, which is the maximum cycling load that the bearing is able to withstand for an infinite period of time. The next is wear resistance, which is the ability of the bearing to resist wear and retain its dimensions. Then uh, compatibility or seizure resistance, this is the ability of the bearing to resist physical joining with the shaft material during metal uh, to metal contact, direct contact between them. Embeddability, the ability of the bearing material to absorb small foreign particles circulating in the oil. The next property is conformability, which is the ability of the bearing material to accommodate misalignments and uh, irregularities geometric uh, irregularities. Corrosion resistance, the ability of the bearing material to resist chemical attack of contaminated lubricants, contaminated oil. <coughs> and the ca cavitation resistance, the ability of the bearing material to withstand 
impact stresses generated by cavitation bubbles. At last, a temperature threshold, a temperature at which burning material starts to melt. I would like to draw your attention to the contradiction between the required bearing properties. You see that load capacity, wear resistance, and also cavitation resistance are the properties referred to the material strength and hardness. Whereas compatibility, embeddability, and conformability characterize the bearing uh, material softness. So the, the, the bearing material should be both strong and soft. It sounds paradoxical, but all existing bearing materials are designed to combine those contradictory properties with a certain compromise. Such combination of the properties, such strange combination of the properties, may be achieved if the bearing material has a composite structure. Actually, all, all bearing materials have composite structure. It means that they are built of a relatively strong base, like copper or aluminum, combined with a solid lubricant in form of either, either a thin overlay or small particles incorporated in the base material. Most bearing materials have uh, either a bimetal or trimetal structure. On this slide, you can see a magnified cross-section of a typical bimetal bearing. It has a steel uh, back, you see it here, which supports the bearing structure. The back uh, provides bearing rigidity and its press fit under severe conditions of increased temperature and cycling loads. The second layer is the bearing lining. It's uh, pretty thick. Its thickness is about 12,000 of inch. A large thickness of the lining of bimetal uh, bearing is very important feature. It allows accommodation of great misalignments and other ge geometric irregularities. It also provides good embeddability for both large and small foreign particles. Commonly, the lining is made of aluminum alloy containing uh, 6 to 20 percent of tin. You see the, the small uh, white particles, th this is the tin. Tin serves as, as a solid lubricant and provides anti-friction properties, compatibility, conformability, and embeddability. Another additive is uh, silicon, about 2 to 4 percent of silicon incorporated in aluminum in form of fine particles. Uh, this is very important uh, additive. Hard silicon strengthens, strengthens the alloy and also serves as an abrasive polishing the, uh, the journal surface. Pres pres presence of silicon is particularly important for engines with cast iron crankshafts, which are difficult uh, to grind because of, of doors of uh, on, the, on their surfaces. The alloy may be additionally strengthened by copper, nickel, and other elements. The two main uh, layers, steel and lining, are bonded to each other by means of a bonding layer of pure aluminum. You see it here. King bimetal materials have a homogeneous microstructure which guarantees the combination of the bearing properties. Good fatigue strengths due to the both fine microstructure and hardening effect of silicon and copper. Very good seizure resistance, particularly with cast, cast iron crankshafts. It is provided by silicon particles. They continuously polish the crankshaft surface and prevent seizure. Good embeddability. The lining is thick, so it is capable to absorb both small and large dirt particles in, uh, in the oil. Good conformability, in contrast to trimetal bearings with thin overlays, bimetal materials are cap capable to accommodate greater misalignments. And good wear resistance due to the relatively hard aluminum alloy, which is harder than the soft overlays of trimetal bearings. Bimetal aluminum silicon bearings bring more uh, value added 
to the rebuilt engines due to better handling of uh, adverse conditions such as misalignments, oil starvation, uh, rough journal surface and heat and other uh, conditions. Here you can see the main grades of uh, King by metal bearings and their designations. The first material is AM. This is the softest by metal material. It contains 20% of tin, 1% of copper and no silicon. AM bearings are used in the passenger cars with low and medium load uh, gasoline engines. SI, this is the silicon containing material for medium load gasoline engines, particularly engines using nodular cast iron crankshafts. And HP, which is silicon containing material for medium load high performance engines with nodular cast iron crankshafts and also for high load short duration en engines.